With iOS and iPadOS 15 out now, that means we have new apps and major updates to cover. So let's get into it. But first, like always, I will link to everything I mentioned in the description below. Yoink is an app I've talked about a lot in the past and it got some really cool updates. Yoink is a clipboard manager and a shelf app. You can use this to store documents, files, websites temporarily. You can also add stuff from your clipboard to the app and then copy it back to your clipboard later on. You can now put videos, images, PDFs, text, and websites into a picture-in-picture -picture window. Just tap on the menu button for the item and select picture-in-picture. -picture. This is handy if you want to reference something but don't need it in Split View or already have another app in Split View. My favorite new feature though is the ability for Yoink to always monitor your clipboard. Hit the plus button at the top, select monitor clipboard, and then select a time length. This will activate a picture-in-picture -picture window so the app stays open and can monitor your clipboard. You can then hide the picture-in-picture -picture window by pushing it to the side. This is the first and only way to get a true clipboard manager on the iPhone and iPad. Since the iPhone now has drag and drop between apps, Yoink works even better on an iPhone. Just start a drag from any app that supports it and then drop it into Yoink. Yoink also supports quick note linking on the iPad. This creates a deep link so you can jump to specific content from the Notes app. Things is my go-to task manager. It got support for two new Excel widgets on the iPad. The first widget is up next, shows all of the tasks due for today and the next three days. I love this widget because it shows me not only what I need to be working on for the day, but what I need to prepare for in the very near future. The second widget, list, lets you specifically view a list. I have mine set on all the video projects that I'm working on. It's just that time of season where I have a bunch of videos that I wanna get done. You can also now change what the plus button does on these widgets. It can now be set to add content to the today view instead of the inbox. Things also got support for live text. When in a task, go into the notes field and tap, and then select the live text option. You can now capture text and insert it into the notes field. I found this to be handy for phone numbers and addresses. For shortcuts users, the things actions between the iPhone and iPad are now unified, so no more needing to use the get device details and an if statement. Grocery is a shopping list app with some really cool built-in features. When setting up groceries, you can set up what stores you do your shopping at. For me, this is Save Mart and Target. I can add different things that I need to get at each store. This way I can pull up the right list depending on what store I'm at. This has been a really handy checklist for shopping. There's also a meal planning and recipe section. Now I haven't been using this much cause I just haven't had time to set this up, but from the sample data that is in here, it seems very robust and impressive. You can even take things a step further and keep an inventory of the stuff you have. I don't see me ever doing this, but it's cool that it's here for the people that wanna use it. Grocery is a nice, clean, and simple app for making a checklist of all the things you either need to pick up or order. Focused Work is a timer app for helping you focus. It has a built-in template for different kind of timer methods. As you run through these, it'll send you notifications on when your times are up for each timer. You can even build custom timers as well. It also has excellent support for shortcuts, so you can start, pause, stop, and more right from shortcuts. If you're the kind of person that works well with a timer system, this would be a great app to check out. One of my favorite apps to use on the iPad mini is Scriblet. This is a digital sticky note app that you can doodle on. It added support for the Excel widget size. I use this to just jot down work thoughts when I'm trying to relax and I know opening my task manager will just lead me down a rabbit hole. So I just write it down here and then I can come back to it whenever later on. Sticky widgets is like Scriblet, but for type text. This is another app that can really take advantage of the Excel widget size on the iPad. Sticky Widgets also recently added support for list mode, so you can make to-dos and display them in the widget. And Sticky Widget added support for shortcuts. You can get content and add content from a particular note. Both Sticky Widgets and Scriblet are excellent apps if you wanna have Post-it style notes on your home screen. Remember iMessage sticker packs? Yeah, neither do I. With Stickerdoodle though, you can easily create your own sticker pack. 
You can do this by drawing out or writing whatever you want. This is great if you aren't like me and actually have artistic talent, but you can import photos and cut certain parts out of a photo and turn that into a sticker. This is much more my speed. This app makes the whole iMessage sticker thing fun again because you can make them personal and not just promotional material for whatever movie is coming out. Speaking of drawing on the iPad, my channel is sponsored by Paperlike. Paperlike is a textured screen protector. And so what this does for you is when you're using the Apple Pencil and you're drawing on the iPad, it gives you feedback. It gives you kind of a friction feedback. So it feels like you're using pencil and paper and not plastic on glass. It's really great if you're drawing or handwriting out any particular notes. This is one of my favorite iPad accessories I use almost every single day. I will put my link to where you can check it out in the description below. The last app I want to mention is Shift Screen. Version 4 recently launched and brought some nice improvements. For those that aren't aware, Shift Screen is a web browser, but when you plug your iPad into a monitor, it ends up taking up the whole display. It also has a built-in calculator and shortcuts for a lot of other web apps. You could do all the window management and opening new windows right from a control center. For me though, this can't replace Safari. The new features like tab groups, the new start page, Safari extensions are just too valuable to me, even though I'm somebody that works at an external monitor with my iPad quite a bit. Those features are just irreplaceable to me. Speaking of Safari extensions, I'm gonna be doing a whole dedicated video on those, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. That's it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have an app or a recommendation or an update to an app that you are really liking, put it in the comments below for people to check out. I'd appreciate it, I'm sure a lot of other people would appreciate it as well. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.